Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the Python for Ethical Hacking series. In this video, we're going to be looking at creating the TCP client. So in the previous video, we looked at how to create the TCP server, but now uh, it's time to move on to that. Uh, to that end and finally we'll uh, we'll initialize the connection and see how data is being transferred uh, you know for the for the purpose or for the sake of learning about sockets uh, that being said I did uh, tell you guys to leave feedback uh, after the first video when we created the TCP server and that was uh, a very very good thing because uh, some of you did not understand a few things and uh, you you had a lot of uh, feedback for me so thank you for that and uh, before we actually get into creating the tcp client let's look at the feedback that you gave me so there were a few points that you guys pointed out and some of them were questions others were uh were like points that you had made to me and i totally got them anyway so uh, essentially the first thing that many people didn't get was uh why are we using the get host name uh, this was always, uh, I was always told that this was good programming practice in the sense that you should be able to know how to automate the process of getting the IP address of the server. That's the server. That's what this function does here. It gets the, it gets the host name. Uh, in theory, it gets the IP address. Now, uh, of course, this usually causes a bit of trouble because uh, if you're running it on Windows, it might not get the correct IP belonging to the subnet. And you can experiment that uh, for yourself. Now, I didn't mention it in that video. That was because we weren't testing the connection. Uh, but this host uh, just as it is. Of course, there are a few additions that I was going to make. So you can see that the variable here... Uh, is using the um, is using the module and the function from the socket module called get host name. So this is the, this essentially will get the value or the IP address of the host or the server. Now, if if you if you don't want this, you can easily just change or add the IP address here. In fact, I, I could add this comment right here. I could say host is equal to and uh, because it's a string and we want to keep it that way, I would check my IP address of the server. So ip config let me just check that and yes it is 0.104 so 192.168.1.104 and uh, that's how i would initialize that variable but again you can see what i was talking about when we talk about automation it's always good to make your script as intelligent as possible so uh, that's why i use this function so for those of you asking what it does and what parameters you can specify the parameters can furthermore be specified when you're talking about binding to the socket so for example this is commented and it's not active so we can change the value in here and replace it with the ip so 192.168.1.104 and remember to put it in to quotation because it is uh, of type string you can convert it to uh, to integer but we are already converting it uh, for ourselves uh, when we when the data is being transferred back and forth Okay, so that was uh, the first thing you guys did not uh, get. Uh, again, you can also change the port the same way I specified here. Don't worry about it. Whatever you find yourself comfortable with, remember it's all about experimentation. All right, so the other thing that you guys pointed out or wanted to know was what I was doing here with the percentage sign and uh, with the str. So essentially str is to convert uh, this into a string. All right, and the percentage uh, allows you to convert, uh, you know, certain data into uh, different data types. So for example, if I wanted to convert this, which I should have actually, uh, thank you for reminding me. Uh, if I wanted to convert it into a string, I would use the, uh, instead of using uh, str, because then I would have to encapsulate it twice, and then it would be too much. I would use the percentage and the, uh, the S command. And as you can see, the S will, uh, will denote a string conversion. Okay, so that means we have converted this into a string. Now, for those of you who are a bit confused uh, and you're asking whether you can encapsulate it as one whole data type, uh, in Python, what you would do is you would use the, um, the wrapper command, which is the R command, which if you just hover over it right now, you can see that it's going to, it doesn't really mean string, and I'll explain what this does. This means that uh, this statement will not be printed in the form of one data type. So right now, when we had S here, it was printing it out as of, uh, as it was printing it out as a string, but when we have the wrapper, the wrapper can be used to make this statement as unambiguous as possible in the sense that it is not printed out in the traditional way of a string which is also very very useful and we'll be looking at that uh, later on and then uh, 
Uh, some of you are asking what this does here and I was a bit shocked to be honest because if you should be knowing this if you have been doing Python, this essentially goes to the next line. This uh, specifies uh, that uh, we are going to the next line. All right, so I added it there with, with uh, concatenation to make sure that the uh, the socket closes and uh, finally ends uh, at in the next line. All right, but before we, we do that, uh, you can see that um, a lot of you, especially a lot of you keen guys, were pointing out that I should have encoded the message. And you're absolutely right. I wanted to talk about that in the next video and not mention it. Sorry about that, guys. I got a little message there. Apologies for the interruption. Uh, so what I was saying is you're talking about encoding and that is true. Uh, we are supposed to encode it and keep the data passed uh, as small as possible. Because if we were to do this and not encode the data, the likelihood of us uh, transferring this data, this would actually fail if we tried to. So uh, you recommended that we use ASCII. So I'm going to do that. So it's really very simple. So the message is the message variable and we want to encode this. So we use the encode function. So encode and in brackets, we specify the, enc the encoding type. So we can specify, you can see that you can specify UTF-8, uh, but in this case, you said ASCII, so let's keep it to ASCII. Now, when we're creating the client, I know we are stretching uh, along a bit too far now. When creating the client, I'll show you how to decode this message, uh, and I'll also show you a way of not using a loop uh, once we have, a, we have established connection. All right, so that's uh, what you guys had recommended here. So let's get started now with the most important bit, which is creating the TCP client. Now, the TCP client is really very simple and nothing has changed or will come over in, in terms of uh, client, uh, in terms of functions. So there's no new functions that you should be looking for, but uh, probably the only one was be, would be the decode and encode. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is I want to specify the... Um, the uh, the python version that we're using so user bin and python uh, python 3 sorry about that so let's import the module now again a lot of you were saying why it didn't import everything again as i said we're going really really slowly uh, we're going really really gradually we are building our skill set as we move along so i'll show you how to import an entire uh, how to import every met method or function from the entire module it's really very simple sorry about this uh not module uh, socket. I was uh, I typed out what I was thinking. All right. So import socket. Now we we need to create the socket object, and we can just call this client socket, and that's going to be equal to socket dot socket. And in here we would specify the uh, the the IP protocol version, and uh, then the transmission control um, the the TCP, or we would specify UDP, a connectionless. Uh, connection or, or one that uses uh, a handshake which is TCP and that's what we're doing all right so we'll say socket dot AF inet and we then say whoops socket um, dot AF uh, actually this is uh, this is supposed to be a uh, socket dot sock stream actually because yes we have specified that so that socket dot sock stream if we're using uh, a UDP we would say dgram that's what we will be looking at in the next videos and I'll probably make an advanced one with that. I was thinking of making a little chat application and then uh, since this is ethical hacking, it wouldn't be wise to create a GUI. But anyway, we'll be looking at all the frameworks and all that exciting stuff as we move along. All right. So again, here, uh, in terms of specifying the host, we can actually give it the variable. So this is going to be the server IP. Now, this is where now you'd have to specify it every time. Or you'd have to make sure that the client does know the IP address of the uh, uh, of the server. So in this case, we can also specify 192.168.1.104. Or you guys can also do it the correct way, which is to get the host name and then you specify the host when connecting to the port, which uh, is the the preferred way of doing it. So what I was talking about is if we say a host here, and I'll 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 comment one of these. We can say socket uh, dot get host name whoops sorry about that um dot get host name and uh, then you know inside the parameters we don't need to specify anything so if i comment this and we use the preferred way uh, let me just specify the port which is supposed to match uh, which is supposed to match sorry that is 444 yes that's the correct one so now when connecting now to the port uh, i would say uh, client socket dot connect because we're using the connect function and in here I would specify the host, which is the address, as you can see. 
uh, and the port. Now I can specify it right now. So I can say 192.168.1.104 and this, any of these methods will work just fine. And then we can specify the port or you can change the port here as that's how, uh, uh, you know, Python is, uh, is interpreted. Okay. So we specify the port. And now the most important thing and also something you guys pointed out is how are we managing how data is being sent? So yes, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can essentially make sure that the data is coming in in units or, uh, or in a certain amount of bytes, meaning making sure that we, we do not accept any more data than what we need. So since we're encoding, we've encoded the message, we can finally say that the message is, uh, is should uh, be, uh, so it's, oh, sorry about that, client uh, socket should be less than receive. Um, so I'm pretty sure we can say dot receive and we specify the data, um, the buffer size as it's telling us here. So this will be, uh, oh, sorry, not one, 1023. So this is the maximum amount of data that can, uh, that we will allow to come through the port. Okay. Or that we will allow uh, being transmitted using the transmission control protocol. Now, again, you can use the same unit factorization to uh, increase. So you can say 2048 and so on and so forth. You get the idea of how data is sorted out. Uh, in addition, I will be making a, a an illustration of how sockets work because most of you pointed out that you could not understand. And I do agree that was my mistake. Apologies there. All right. So now uh, if we don't want to create a a, a loop here, that's also something that is not very smart to do. Um, what we can do is we can say, uh, since we have received, uh, we now need to decode the message because remember the message is encoded in ASCII. Uh, to save time, because the the decoding will take a it will take a while, um, depending on the amount of data, we can close the socket because we we have already uh, sorry. Uh, client, I, I keep on using S because that's what we used to use as the object name. So client socket. Uh, and in here we would specify uh, the fact uh, that we are closing the socket. So close. And then we can finally say we can finally decode. So we can print this out. We can say print and uh, we can say message dot decode. And uh, we know how to do that. That is ASCII. That is what we're decoding. And that should be the TCP client. Now, of course, I'll be commenting this and adding documentation before I upload it uh, to GitHub so you guys can understand what's going on. All right. So I'm currently on Windows. And uh, the way we're going to test this is I have one of my virtual machines running, one that I could get up set up really quickly, which is uh, Ubuntu. So that's going to be our client. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the TCP client dot uh, the the Python file onto this virtual machine. So let me just do that right now. Uh, there, it, there it is, TCP client. So I'm just going to drag it across as that would be the easiest way of doing it. So I think I have Python 3 installed. It would be a real bummer if I didn't. Sorry about that. Uh, for some reason, my virtual machine. All right. So we have it on the desktop. So I'm, let me just open up my terminal here and uh, desktop. Um, Let's list the files. Yeah, there we are. So Python 3, hopefully I have it installed. I should have because I use this for web development. Uh, so TCP client and uh, let's hit enter to see if it works. Uh, and for some reason it is listening. That's weird. Did we already start the server? Or was it already running? Because I think I had it running when I was testing it. Uh, anyway, don't worry. Uh, we'll let us try and run this again. Uh, we can run the server now in the terminal. So I'm going to run it here through Visual Studio Code. And yes, it has received it twice. Um, so there's something wrong there. So what I'm going to do is let's stop this and let's change the data here just to, to see if it works. All right. So um, thank you for connecting to the server. Uh, this is an example of how sockets uh, can be used. All right, so something just we've added some more data there. It should be able to handle this. Uh, so let's see what we have here. Uh, this was just added a few moments ago. That's weird. All right, so let me just run this in the terminal. So yes, the, script, the server is running. That was really weird. Uh, let me just see if this is working. We should be able to get it. Uh, all right, so we see it's working. That's how uh, the message was transferred. I think I ran this before and I, when I was testing the bytes there, the amount of bytes that can be sent. 
uh, using, uh, you know, uh, all right, so I, I get what happened. So I did perform the run. I, ru I ran it once and I specified the host. Yeah, I was testing the port scanner. Sorry, but as I said, I was working on another script and I was testing the port scanner and I was testing it on this client because this is the only virtual machine I have. So you can see that it was successful. We were, we were able to, uh, to get the message. Hello. Thank you for connecting to the server. This is an example of how sockets can be used. Now, of course, this does not look very complicated. But we have, in essence, uh, we have been able to send a message across. Now, uh, again, a lot of you suggested that I create a chat application. And I was thinking about that. And you know what? I think I will have that as one of the next projects that we'll be working on. That'll really make it awesome, especially if it was an instant messenger type of uh, chat. Um, so now let's see if we got the, the message that was supposed to be displayed on the server. And yes, we did. We got received connection from... Uh, 192.168.1.106 uh, and uh, you see you can see this is the correct syntax let me just make that uh, a bit better we can use that again and um, let me just kill that session there let's run this in the terminal again and uh, that is waiting or listening for a connection let me run that again and uh, let's see uh, how yes so received a connection from 192.168.1.106 so that worked perfectly and again you feel free to customize how you want to uh to specify the host uh, or the server ip and also i'll be i'll be also tweaking this uh to give you extra options of uh of automatically setting the the server ip in the in the tcp client so uh, for those of you asking why there weren't any additional features like encryption added, uh, as I said, this is a gradual process. We will be learning how to incorporate the most important modules from the Python standard library and how to create really awesome scripts, as I said. So th you can consider these really good examples for you to learn how everything works with uh, with sockets. So that was how to create a TCP uh, TCP's client and TCP server, not really, uh, you know, awesome, mind blowing stuff, but it's, it's a step in the right direction into, uh, you know, for you to understand how, uh, how, how to use, uh, you know, important modules like the socket uh, in Python and obviously to get accustomed to doing this with Python 3, which is going to be, uh, you know, without a doubt the future of Python. So that being said, guys, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, you can find both of these on my, uh, github repository so i'll be posting that in the description uh, if you found value in this video please leave a like down below if you have any questions or suggestions let me know in the comment section on my social networks or you can ask your personalized questions on my website so i'll be seeing you in the next video peace